Hello there beautiful people, my name is Faith, Faith the Pharmacist, if you're new here, welcome to my channel and welcome back to all my old subscribers. Today's video is an ethical dilemma, so this is another one in the series that I'm making and today's ethical dilemma was submitted by one of my lovely subscribers, it's going to give us an insight into a little bit of you know, what the politics of the pharmacy profession is like in the UK, sort of. If you want to find out what happened in this video or what happened in this person's situation and what my advice was and, you know, what exactly this kind of situation can play out to be, keep watching and, yeah, let's get straight into the video. Just a brief intro into ethical dilemmas. They are scenarios, professional, clinical, whatever scenario that you have faced in practice that you find to be a dilemma and you were unsure of how to handle them. With ethical dilemmas, there's usually no one-size-fits-all answer. However, I aim to take you through exactly the different things that you need to think about and consider when you are faced with situations similar to any of the dilemmas that I will be sharing on this channel. So if you've got any ethical dilemma that you feel like you might need a different perspective of, or a different insight or you just need some more advice or you just want to see what someone else might have done if they were in your position please feel free to send them to my email address my email address will be on the screen <laughs> let's get straight into today's ethical dilemma I'm just going to read the email from my laptop which is just on my lap as usual and um, I'm going to go straight into what this person I feel like should be doing in this situation and if I've ever come across similar situations in practice and um, I believe that there's just going to be one main point to take away from this video as there should be for all of my ethical dilemmas so let's dive into it so the email reads good morning Faith how are you and your family doing I am that apprenticeship lady so this lady has sent me emails in the past and we have like had a bit of an interaction in the emails um, and she says I just want to discuss a few things I have experienced in my present pharmacy with you I was supposed to be trained by my main pharmacist in the store but he was just too busy my assistant manager has been helpful I can ask her any questions and she will explain to me clearly if she's not sure or she will ask the pharmacist However, my assistant manager was the one training me, which I enjoyed, but I'm reporting to two people, the main pharmacist as well as the assistant, because there's a communication issue between the two parties. The assistant manager will ask me to do something, for example, if you come across any out-of-date medications, you should record it in this book as part of your training. But as I was recording one eye drop that was out of date, my pharmacist said to me, what is happening here? Give this to me. I will deal with it. I was so confused because he didn't mention to me about recording out-of-date medications, but he just says, leave it for me and I will deal with it. But I think it should be recorded as that's the right way. I will be three months in this pharmacy this month, but I don't think I will stay here after my training because of the way things are being done. I don't have any issue with anyone here, but I believe in doing things the right way. So I'm not sure if we're familiar with the fact that there's an apprenticeship route in the UK now for almost everything. So I believe that this lady is an apprentice dispenser, which um, started a few years ago. So people come in to pre prepare to be dispensers or, you know, pharmacy technicians by doing the apprenticeship route where they just shadow the pharmacy team and be put on the training by the company that they're joining and by the end of their apprenticeship training they get qualified to join the team or any pharmacy team and they get certification for it. I think this is an awesome idea because some people just don't want to go to school. Some people go to school and it's a waste of money, especially in the UK where most people go to school with student loans. So this lady is an apprentice in a pharmacy and even though she's not a pharmacist, I believe that there's lots that we can learn from this because as pharmacists, you end up training under someone before you become your own pharmacist anyways. And these scenarios are things that we are not unfamiliar with. We have come across them. I have come across this in practice. Thankfully, I've not had to deal with any of them directly, but I have actually experienced some of this when I was a locum pharmacist where you hear things from one person and another person tells you something else who would be the pharmacist or if you enter into a store where the pharmacist and the manager 
do not agree and they do things different ways and they just end up butting heads one of the key considerations that I said to her was that you don't want to you know butt people's heads because first of all you met them there and you never know what their relationship history has been you don't want to do things and you know name and shame other people to make to make room for conflict and then they'll say oh you're the one that's caused the conflict just avoid it at all cost so if you're doing something that one person has asked you to do and the other person is telling you um wait wait don't do that just leave the other person's name out of it just say okay the responsible pharmacist who is i feel like the key person in any pharmacy because there's usually arguments between pharmacists and managers anyways like pharmacists will be like oh i'm the one in charge the managers will be like i'm the one in charge there's very few pharmacies where they both get on and they both agree on things that should be done so it's it's common if you become a pre-reg in a pharmacy where you have pharmacist and manager and they're both butting heads just sit down and watch this video because I'll give you some nuggets on how to make sure that you don't get in the middle of their mess. If you're in this situation, you want to make sure that you are following the rules of the book. So in every pharmacy, there's something called standard operating procedures. And they give us these SOPs, they're called. They give us these SOPs at the beginning of practice or at the beginning of working with a company or a team and... It's just so long and boring to go through a massive folder reading the things that you have to do when you're working. So half the time we forget whatever you've read or half the time you're even half asleep while you're reading it. I have to be honest and raise my hand up like I don't remember any SOP that I've ever read and I have read like books and books and books of SOPs. Um, a lot of the things that you do you learn in practice but in a situation like this I think you would need to be reliant on the SOPs because you're getting information from one person and another person and the information is not aligning you want to go back to the SOP which is a standard operating procedure that lets you know exactly what you should actually be doing because at the end of the day if you go and do what one person says they can end up stitching you up if they if you get in trouble for doing whatever they said they won't admit that they're obviously the ones that told you to do that all the time. Some people are good and they might, but not in all cases. So you want to always cover your back and do things as you know should be done. And if you get approached by any of these people, you can easily just say, oh, I remember reading the SOP that that's what we should do. And that way you've sort of like, even you can even be teaching them because I'll be honest with you, pharmacists, who work in stores for years and years sometimes forget what's even in the SOP so it might be a good reminder and SOPs get updated so you might just be you know giving them an up-to-date version of the SOP that they probably have forgotten about my advice is to just stick to your integrity stick to what you know is right you're getting information from two different people you don't need to Start wondering who should I follow, who should I speak to. There are always standard operating procedures. And you should always rely on these because they are there for you to know what you're doing. So once you've managed to understand what you should do in that situation, for example, the out-of-date medication which should always be recorded, try not to cut corners and just try to do things accordingly especially when you're training because it's important that you get the right training right because you're going to take your training into different teams imagine you go into a different team with a training that you know someone made up in their head for you and has not been done according to the book you're going to take that information and go and potentially destroy another team that you will be entering in the future so yeah these things do happen in pharmacy and i have definitely seen it happen in real life where people are butting heads in the pharmacy and you don't want to be involved just face your front carry your sop hug it tight follow what's in the sop if they ask you just say to them oh yeah remember reading it in the sop oh is that what you do here is what you do here different you to tell you that what they do there is different i would note it down do what they do but always record that this is what the sop says um but this is what they say they're doing i'm not sure about this have it somewhere written just in case something ever comes up because again you don't want to go and tell the pharmacist oh i'm just gonna do what the sop does and not going to listen to you you might just cause conflict for yourself as well um so 
in as much as you're telling them you got what you're doing from the SOP, if they tell you, actually, no, this is what I want done, then just do what they want you to do, but have it recorded in case you ever got pulled up. And the other thing I have to say is that if you find yourself working in teams where people are doing things the wrong way, so for example, say you need to denature controlled drugs, you need to get rid of controlled drugs, and they're not recording it correctly, or things are going out of date, and I, I have been a manager, see, I understand when your figures have to match and when you don't want your store to look like you are working in um, below the profit margin that the company has given you as a target, right? You want to make sure things don't just look not right. Then you might and you might try to cut corners here and there. If you're working in a in a place that does something like that, I personally would try not to get too involved. Um, if you can remove yourself from those situations, fine, just so that you're not implicated. You don't tell them that you know how to do it a different way. If you're just learning, just observe, right? You are not in any position to whistleblow them, to be honest. Unless they're doing anything that you feel like it's outwardly damaging to patients or just generally healthcare and just really, really illegal stuff. If you find anyone doing really, really illegal stuff, I would whistleblow and anonymously report it to someone in the company that deals with issues like that. For example, if you catch someone stealing or if you catch someone taking medication from the pharmacy without permission or if you find someone maybe getting rid of things that they shouldn't be getting rid of or if you find someone taking things home that they shouldn't be taking home so if you find someone just taking things off the shelf from the pharmacy and they're not paying for it and you're a witness to that i will whistle blow that i'm sorry i will whistle blow i will not turn a blind eye to if someone is doing something that is definitely illegal um or especially when it has to do with like controlled drugs and patients lives are at stake and you see that this person is blatantly doing this thing without any remorse and they just carry on doing it it's not a one-off it's not a oh it just happened it was a slip of tongue it was a slip of finger if you catch someone doing something illegal please whistle blow because at the end of the day you will be saving someone's life and you will also be looking out for the business if it's something like stealing um but if it's minor things like or they just wrote things in the wrong page or they're trying to adjust their figures just so they don't get caught out to be not making profit just note those things down but you don't necessarily have to whistle blow those ones i know there's no like black and white to what you need to report and what you shouldn't report but just tread carefully is what i would say in this situation i will just do things according to the standard operating procedures for your learning's sake however if they tell you this is what we do in this pharmacy go ahead and do what they do in the pharmacy but record it down and say this is what they've told me but this is what i wanted to do but i'm just doing what they you know have asked me to do just in case you get pulled up and you can always tell the other person to say, oh, you're not sure what to do because this person has told you to do something differently. Um, is that okay? Or you don't, don't tell, don't, don't throw people under the bus with each other. Don't try to cause conflict. Don't try to cause any arguments because you're going to find yourself absolutely hating yourself in wherever situation you found yourself afterwards. I hope this has been a little bit clear i hope this has given you some information to work with and i hope that if you ever do find yourself in this kind of situation in future you can come back to this video and have a bit of an idea of how to handle it this video i think is particularly for people who are training under pharmacists managers whoever but yeah i wish you all the best and i will catch you guys in my next video please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and if you've got an ethical dilemma that you would like me to talk about on the channel, please send them to my email, which will be on the screen. Thank you guys for stopping by my channel and I will catch you in my next video.